Are you ready? How can you be prepared? Amen. Is your job keeping you from, from, from excuse me? Is your job keeping you from fulfilling God's plan in your life? Oh. Oh. The next question is your lifestyle keeping you from fulfilling God's plan in your life? <laughs> this is something I had to look at. Is your family keeping you from fulfilling God's plan within your life? Oh, pastor, family's family. Amen. It is. But if God told you to do something, you have to leave your father and mother and do it. Amen. They'll understand. Hallelujah. Because you'll be blessed and they'll be blessed. Amen. The last question is, if any of these things are true, what are you doing about it? Amen. If you know there's things in your life that are hindering you from God's plan, being fulfilled, and having a righteous, full life in your life, what are you doing about it? These things don't take care of themselves. Amen. Something has to be done. I do not want to substitute on my spiritual mission. Amen. Well, I really would have wished Joe could have made it. Hallelujah. I really would have wished Joe could have made it, but you know what? He had so much things to attend to in his life, he was just too busy. So I have this substitute Joe that they found in the street to take care of it. Amen. That's what he's saying. Hallelujah. Sometimes there's also no righteous movement in our life because we aren't prepared to move. Mm. We're comfortable with where we're at. Amen. God moves the most in my life when I'm uncomfortable. Agreed. Agreed. I know it's the same as everybody else. When you're uncomfortable, God will make leaps and strides and bounds. Amen. But when you're comfortable, hallelujah, it's like you got to get you moving. Amen. And he makes things around your life to make you uncomfortable so you can be in that same situation again. So instead of being uncomfortable to move, why don't you just be prepared to move? Amen. And comfortable moving. I know it sounds strange and odd, but the Lord was saying, I'm like, God, how come whenever I'm, I have difficulty in my life is when you move the most? It's because you're not prepared to move when there's no difficulty. Be prepared to move at all times, amen. You're not going to have the difficulty because he's not going to bring it to you so he can move. Amen. He's just going to move through you. Let's continue, amen? Spiritual growth in the righteous is commanded in our full righteous life. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 9, 10, amen. We are commanded to be fruitful. Hallelujah. Now he who supplies the seed of the sower and the bread for food will also supply increase in your store and the seed of the righteous, and will enlarge the harvest of the righteous. The righteous are supposed to be fruitful. Amen. This is a good thing. The righteous are commanded to grow in Christ. We are supposed to be growing in Christ more today than yesterday, more today than last year. Amen. If your spiritual growth is the same this year as it was last year, Something is stunted, amen. You are not going to have a full Christian life. Does everybody understand where I'm coming from? Amen. Always moving forward. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 15. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up in him who is the head, that is Christ. We grow up. There's a certain amount of maturity that we need to do. Amen. First Thessalonians 3.12. We need to grow in love. Amen. This is a hard thing. Hallelujah. Look out. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other 
and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. Your love needs to increase. Amen. You can't be grumpy old man. Hallelujah. I know I want to be grumpy old man, but I'm not supposed to. Amen. The righteous have to grow in love. Amen. You have to care more today than you did yesterday. Amen. It shouldn't be the other way. I don't care anymore. That's the wrong attitude to have. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. We have to care more today than yesterday. Amen. Our, grow, our love should be growing and growing and growing. Amen. So quiet in here today. Amen. Amen. Conviction. I know I'm getting conviction. Righteous are, yeah, people are sleeping. Amen. Righteous are to be. Not me. Grow in perfection. Amen. Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings of Christ and go on to maturity. Amen. Not laying the foundation of repentance and acts that lead to death and faith in God. Hallelujah. We are supposed to be moving forward. Amen. Hallelujah. So why are some people stunted? If we're supposed to have all of these things in our life and live a full life and grow... Why is this happening in our life? I'm beeping. Because they're not spiritually mature, amen. And that's what the crux of this message is. It's time for us to begin to become spiritually mature, amen. It's time to get off the milk and eat some meat, amen. Let's take a look at Hebrews 5, 11 through 14. Amen. We have much to say about this, but it's hard to explain, explain because you are slow to learn. Is anybody here a slow learner? Hallelujah. <laughs> That's not a good thing. We used to make fun of kids. He's a slow learner. Amen. But when it comes to Chris, Christian principles, sometimes people can be slow learners. Hallelujah. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need to teach someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, still being an infant, is not acquainted with teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who have constant, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish between good and evil. The King James says he has been able to discern between good and evil. Isn't that interesting? Amen. Someone who eats meat is able to discern between good and evil. But people who are on milk don't have that discernment. Amen. One day, I'm going to do a good thing. Amen. Next day, I'm going to do a bad thing. Amen. There's no discernment. So they never grow. When they never grow, they can never have meat. There's no spiritual maturity. Amen. It's time that we begin to know what's good is good and what's evil is evil. Amen. And discern between the two. Hallelujah. And not say, well, praise the Lord. I'm going to do good today, but tomorrow I'm going to really do bad. Amen. <laughs> when you're mature and you eat meat, you can discern between what is good and what is evil. Amen. Evil will always Evil will always be pleasurable to you. Amen. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. If evil wasn't pleasurable to you, you wouldn't do it. Yes. Amen. That's the allurement. If evil wasn't naturally pleasurable to you, you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't even be tempted. Amen. How many people here are tempted to eat Brussels sprouts? Not me. Not me. 